Hello, enthusiastic learners, and welcome to part three of our characterization podcast series. This part is entitled Foil Pairs. So what is a foil? A foil is a character who contrasts with another character who's usually the protagonist, but it doesn't have to be the protagonist. Those characters can be good versus evil, like in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, Or it can be two characters whose actions and personalities simply differ, like George and Lenny from Of Mice and Men. So why is it important to recognize foil pairs? Well, because recognizing and analyzing foil pairs will help the reader to interpret theme. A quick review, what is theme? Well, theme is the author's comment on the human condition or what the author is trying to say about all people. It's important to note that there are two types of foil pairs, like the example that I provided on the first slide. There are those who stay in opposition throughout the text, and then there are those who come together, eventually combining their strengths, kind of like to create one giant super strength pair. Let's take a look at those. Here's An example of those who stay in opposition, characters who stay on opposite sides of an issue throughout the course of a text. So for example, Harry Potter and Voldemort, they start in book one as enemies. And throughout the course of the seven books of the series, they remain enemies. They remain on opposite sides of this kind of global wizarding war, and they stay in opposition with regard to their morals, their beliefs, their code of conduct, their ethics. Everything begins in opposition and ends in opposition. They never change sides. Nor do they ever come together in terms of their beliefs or their philosophies. And while in fact they do physically come together in the end of book seven in order to battle one another ultimately, they never come together in terms of their actual moral compass. The next type of foil pair are those who come together in the end. For example, Will Turner and Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean series. These two characters start in opposition to one another. If you'll remember from the original Pirates of the Caribbean movie, Will Turner actually battles Jack Sparrow when Jack Sparrow first arrives in Will Turner's land. And in fact, Will Turner is disgusted by the thought of pirates and by all that they represent. However, if one follows the development of these two characters throughout the course of the series, then they will notice that ultimately, not only does Will Turner start to admire and respect Jack Sparrow, but Jack Sparrow returns that respect and admiration, and ultimately, Will Turner in fact becomes a pirate, which one could argue is the most sincere form of coming together. You carry that pistol now. You waste your shot. He didn't waste it. All right, so once you understand this idea of a foil pair, how do you use this knowledge to determine theme? Well, this is a three-parter, you guys. The first part is to read actively. You have to pay attention to the relationship that is developing between characters. Once you notice 
a contrast developing between two characters, then it's important to chart that development of the characters' relationships with each other. See whether they remain in contrast with one another. See whether they come together, because that's going to make a difference. So, for example, in Wicked, which is shown in front of you pictorially, at the beginning, the two women represent very different characteristics. Elphaba is considered intellectual, but not very attractive, while Galinda is seen as incredibly attractive, yet doesn't have a whole lot of intellectual abilities to offer the world. However, as the two develop their relationship, we see that both characters are in fact full of depth, full of emotion, and also full of sort of catty personality traits as well. So they can both feel a little bit childish at times, and they can both look deep and intellectual at times. Also, I think the author develops the idea of attractiveness and who's actually beautiful and who isn't. And I think throughout the course of this movie, you see both characters at certain times are in fact truly beautiful and both characters at certain times are not very attractive at all. So if you chart that development, it's going to help you understand the depth of these characters, how they serve as foils for one another, so that you can work toward a thematic interpretation. Yep, pink goes good with green. Why, Miss Alphaba? Look at you. You're beautiful. <laughs> I have to go. You're welcome. And then the third thing you need to do is just analyze all that information and use it to answer why the author would develop the relationship in that way. So what are they trying to say about all people? And in the case of Glinda and Elphaba, I think one argument you could come to ultimately is that every person possesses the ability to be beautiful or the ability to be wicked. So the author's comment on the human condition is that we all have the full range of emotional possibility within us, and it is up to us both to develop our own strengths, but also to find strength in others, to find the characteristics and qualities that we wish we had in other people and use those as models or exemplars to make our own lives all the richer and all the better. I have been changed for good. And just to clear the air, I ask forgiveness for the things I've done you blame me for. But then I guess we know there's blame to share. And none of this seems to matter anymore. Like a ship blown by a tower, by a wind of the sea, a stream that meets a boulder, a river with blood. So, young Padawan learners, that'll do it for us for today's third installment of Characterization. Thanks, and we'll see you in class.